put universal harmony back into scholastics uh, at Harvard and Cambridge and Oxford by reading about the music of the spheres and universal harmony. In the untuning of the sky, so we continue, page 186, about the power of music. The important source for medieval treatments of Orpheus is Boethius's De Consolation, translated into Old English by King Alfred, which, however, gives no account of the reasons for the wondrous effects of the music upon its hearers. We have seen how Henry Sons Orpheus partook the benefits of a good scholastic education. He studied as quandrivium so well as to learn the lessons of, and there, hence to master the powers of universal harmony. It was to the advantage of humanism, however, to allegorize the Orphean music into rational discourse, the most almost propagandistic glass in a 1525 printed version of John Walton's 15th century verse translation of Boethius in Book 3, Mitrium 12, is a good early example of this. Mm -hmm. Quote, by Orpheus is understood the hyper part of the soul that is uh, reasonably informed with re Wisdom eloquent. Uh, thus Orpheus, by the sweetness of his harp, uh, that is to say, bestly man and savage, brought into the rule of reason. So this is how you can get become the best man of reason, huh? Mm -hmm. The best scholar, huh? Perhaps. Mm -hmm. Let's see, he says, quote, by Orpheus is understood the higher part of the soul. That's by using the universal harmonies to get to the higher part of the soul. That is reasonably informed uh, with the wisdom and eloquence. Thus, Orpheus, by the sweetness of his harp, that is to say, bestly men. This is if you're the best man. And savage brought in the rule of reason. Hmm. This kind of moralization in which Orpheus, Orphean music is the rational and calming stresses not so much the power of his playing to incite and inflame either feelings, deeds, or even thoughts as its power to bring the soul into a justing climate of wisdom, the, the rule of reason. You think uh, if you listen to the music of the spheres, your mind might become reasonable. This power is conceptually related to the traditional notion of Musica humana. Hmm. Which defines the harmonious composition of the soul by saying that it is in perfect tune or harmony with the universal music. Hmm. The soul gets in perfect tune or harmony with the universal music. The music of this Orpheus, mm -hmm. quote, this Orpheus, rather than inducing worldly lust. Hmm. He's saying you could get in tune with this Orpheus, or the music of this Orpheus. It's a kind of moralization, karma. Commoning. It's rational and calming. Hmm. Rather than inducing worldly lust or feelings, subdues them by leading them into the magnetic field, as it were, of universal reason. Hmm. 
Interesting. Universal. Hmm. I'll read that again. It says something about this power is conceptually related to the traditional notion of musica humana, as traditional, which defines the harmonious composition of the soul by saying that it is in perfect tune or harmony with the universal music. The music of this Orpheus, rather than inducing worldly lust or feelings, subdues them by leading them into the magnetic field, as it were, of universal reason. Do you think of these students at the school are calmed down by listening to the music of the spheres, that they'll have more reason and be better students? Uh -huh. In alleg allegorizations like this, the destroying monads in, quote, the rout that made the Idiots the roar, unquote, became all the forces of unreason. Francis Bacon describes them in his allegorization of the story in De Sapion Tio, De Sapion Tio, Literum, quote, and all this went on for some time with happy success and great admiration till at last certain Thracian women under the simulation, stimulation and excitement of Bacchus hmm, came where he was and first they blew a horse and a hideous blast upon a thorn horn that the sound of his music could no longer be heard for the din. So they couldn't hear the music anymore or something because of the racket. The sound of the music could no longer be heard because of all the racket going on and the traffic noise. Uh -huh. hmm. Whereupon the charm being broken that had been the bond of that order and good fellowship, uh, confusion began again. The beast returned each to his several nature and preyed upon one upon the other as before. Hmm. Unquote. Bacon's moralization of the story is one of philosophy. Orpheus singing, he continues, has two distinct powers. One of these is the power to propitiate infernal forces. The other is the traditional effective influence upon inanimate inan and inanimate entities in the allegory. The former is natural philosophy or natural science, the latter moral and political philosophy. Bacon allows Platonistic, Platonist, Platonistic tradition as carried on by Jean Bowden and others, as well as in emblem literature, by equating the harmonious, <laughs> harmonious structure of the lyre as well as its music with the model of human order. Hmm. Hmm. We're talking a bit about Boethius's De Conciliation Philosophy and uh, Francis Bacon's De Sapienta. Hmm. 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 The Bacchic Menads uh, became the disorders of ungovering nature. Oh my goodness, what'd they do? Drink too much? Hmm. For so it is that after kingdoms and the commonwealths have flourished for a time, there arise perturbations and sedu seditions and war amid the uproars of which first the laws are put to silence. And when men return to the depraved conditions of their nature and desolation is seen in the fields and the cities. <laughs> Without the uncivilizing influence of Orphean music. <laughs> hmm. Is that what happened? Hmm. Without the civilizing influence of the Orphean music. Humanity lapses 
into barbarism. Hmm. Is that what happened, maybe? Hmm. How do we get the classical and Christian ideas of world harmony back into this, into the Harvard, Cambridge, Yale, and Oxford? I don't know. I guess we could read this book into it. It takes a little straining of analogy for us to see how mutatis mutantis, this purely civil effect may be seen as Christian grace, saving rather than civilizing, while Bacon's twofold analogy of natural and moral philosophy is definitely his own and his own ages. It lies close to, in some ways, to cla classical notions of music as patia, patia, and to the distinction between the music of the Orphean lyre and the ma monads alo as a difference as a difference between the conventional rational and irrational associations of the respective instruments mm. 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 remember Orpheus is the son of Dionysus rather than Apollo How's that imply? Orpheus was the son of Dionysus, not of Apollo. His lyre, at any rate, is the instrument sacred to Phoebus, and his music was, in Greek terms, a rational music, as opposed to the textless sound of the eros, eros, the whole Dionystic aspect of the Orphean legend and the Orphic uh, religious cult. Uh, are you going to read about Orpheus and the Greek religion? What's that religion? Hmm. hmm. Well, we were talking about without the civilizing influence of the Orphean music, humanity lapses into barbarism. Hmm. Mm. We're talking about here. We're going to stop there, page uh, 170, about how to get back to the universal reason and to have some calming effects and for moralist purposes. <laughs> we need to look at the power of universal harmony, the wondrous effects of music in Boethius. Um, mm -hmm. And we need the, the music of Orpheus to subdue these feelings with, into the magnetic field, as it were, of universal reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the sound of this music can no longer be heard because of the Great din of racket, all the racket and all. too much noise. <laughs> we were reading uh, from the untuning of the sky um, about the guy Orpheus and Orphean music, which is uh, a Greek concept going back to the music of the spheres and uh, music, English uh, ideas of music in English poetry. <laughs>